My name is Maxime Schreier, and I would like to talk to you a little bit about my new book, Immigrant Baggage. First, a couple of words about the way this memoir came into existence. I composed the bulk of the book during the first two years of the COVID-19 pandemic. Much of it has to do with travel, with crossing boundaries of cultures, with examining lived experiences, both as a stranger looking in and as a resident peering out. When life came to a near standstill in the spring of 2020, and when movement across borders of countries became impossible, I began to reflect on some of the most memorable travel adventures and misadventures of the previous five years. From the prohibition against the freedom of movement came the initial impulse behind this memoir, which I envisioned as tragic comic. Attempts at border crossing sometimes delight or perhaps enchant the transgressor while also auguring disappointment, heartbreak, or even real danger. Composed in the time of the pandemic, this memoir is but a partial record of my immigrant discoveries, transgressions, and valedictions. Now, you may also wonder how this book complements my previous memoirs, Waiting for America, A Story of Immigration, and Leaving Russia, A Jewish Story. Leaving Russia and Waiting for America form a diligy, and in fact, I eventually hope to add a sequel to it, a sequel about my early American immigrant years. While personal and even confessional in their outlook, these are nevertheless memoirs of time and epoch, and as such, they must inevitably contend with larger questions of history, politics, and ideology. The main story I told in Leaving Russia and Waiting for America focused on growing up a refusenik, on the agony and collapse of the former Soviet Union, and ultimately on the experience of emigrating and becoming a political refugee in the summer of 1987, on discovering the big, great world of which we had been deprived back in the USSR, and also on feeling the first pangs of nostalgia as both an existential and a cultural condition. In contrast to my memoirs about living in and leaving the USSR, this new book, Immigrant Baggage, does not have an overarching historical or political narrative. It is primarily a memoir of living within and without languages, a story of the translingual self that refuses to be trapped in museums of culture and identity, and in doing so, continues to seek a greater freedom of self-expression. Now, if I were to come up with a spatial metaphor or allegory to describe how my new memoir works, I might resort to the dragonfly's compound eye, or perhaps evoke a Byzantine-influenced mosaic floor of a synagogue. Each chapter of this memoir is a recaptured moment of displacement, a segment or a fragment, an octagonal gold tile or a rectangular piece of lapis glass. At the same time, each section of this memoir is also an item of its author's immigrant baggage, both material and immaterial, and hence the book's title and its cover. I want to show it to you again. Its cover on which you can see an old-fashioned valise stuffed with various accoutrements of the three principal cultures that I call my own and carry with me on my trips. 
This way, the book's six interconnected tales are held together by the memorist's imperative to make the ordinary absurd and the absurd ordinary. Now, I would also like to talk a little bit about the experience of having completed this memoir three weeks prior to the start of the war in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has placed, for the second time since my family's immigration, a demarcation line between my past and my present. In the spring of 2022, as I was putting the finishing touches to this book, I kept thinking of the bloodshed in Ukraine not only as an attempt by Putin's regime to murder the land where three of my grandparents had been born before the start of World War I, but also as a neo-colonial war aimed at the restoration of the Soviet past. So in a sense, immigrant baggage is also a story of separation from Russia's present and future while remaining culturally Russian. And then there is finally the question of translingual pleasures and perils. In what language do you think? I'm often asked during readings and literary events. Is it Russian? English? Both? I reply honestly that it hardly matters for the creative outcome. Over the years, I have had vivid dreams in which I lectured in French about sophisticated matters of culture and history. When I'm awake, my command of spoken French is limited. In the spring of 1993, when I was living and doing research in Prague in the Czech Republic, I experienced dreams in which I had extensive debates about politics with the former vintage 1968 Czech dissidents. In reality, my Czech is quite rudimentary. I'm pointing this out because dreams give us deeper access to mechanisms of culture production, mechanisms that probably impact translingual writers most profoundly by revealing the hidden realms of exile. Three and a half decades after emigrating from what used to be the Soviet Union, and now feeling less of a stranger among American writers. I'm still discovering the pleasures of writing in tongues. In different ways, I am rooted in three cultures, Russian, Jewish, and American. Yet, a writer's life is about much more than one's sense of roots. It is about floating in space-time, about the texture, scent, and taste of words. The war in Ukraine has brought into devastatingly sharp focus what I've known for quite some time and tried to practice in my work. Writers are not only products of their origins, but also creative remakers of their identity. I really hope you enjoy the book and the adventures in cultures and languages that I described in it. Thank you very much.